surf and shark attacks in Reunion Island and elsewhere. Excuse me if my English is not perfect and uh, my pronunciation too. My name uh, is Jean-François Nativel. I'm a PE teacher, national volleyball champion, a waterman for 35 years as a swimmer, surfer and spear fisherman. In 2011, following a shark attack in the heart of our main sea resort, I joined a fishing expedition to find the bull shark responsible. This caused a lot of controversy, which led me to my struggle for shark mitigation. Then followed eight years of fighting, in which I personally became involved. I founded the first Reunion's Shark Attack Prevention Society, Ocean Prevention Reunion. My objective was to maintain access to the sea in Reunion. I'm not a marine biologist or academic, but through my relentless study, many people considered me as a specialist. This is the tragic story of my book. For six years, it has been illegal to go into the ocean in Reunion Island. What happened in Reunion Island? Reunion is a small isolated island lost in the Indian Ocean. It has been a French territory since 1946, where aquatic activities have been developed over the last 40 years. Our island is a surfing paradise with more than 60 surf spots close to shore and waves all year round. The population enjoys excellent health services. There is no malaria, dangerous insects or reptiles. It has a mild climate with perfect water temperature. It's France and Europe in the tropics. Surfing arrived on the island in the 1970s, producing some of the best French champions like Jeremy Flores and Joanne de Fay. Reunion Island was at the time known as the Little French Hawaii. However, today it is hard for young surfers to continue the tradition because the ocean has been officially off limits since July 2013. The shark crisis has turned our beaches into a cemetery. French government bureaucrats dictate their colonial policies with decisions made far away in Paris. The risk of shark attacks had always been taken seriously in Reunion, but it was located in wild areas of the island where you can find black sand beaches with lava pebbles, where strong winds are regular and where the water becomes turbid after heavy rains. Surfers have avoided these areas since the first shark attacks in the late 80s and have never asked for a mitigation policy. The west coast was considered safe as there had been no serious attacks in this area before Eric Dargen was attacked in February 2011. This unexpected localization was the first sign of a major change, which motivated our initial fishing expedition and subsequent demands for policies to protect the public. There are lots of debates about what caused this major change, mainly because solutions depend on causes and facts. My book and my other presentations detail this complex and controversial topic. To resume, the biologists explain that the increasing rate of shark attacks in reunion is due to environmental degradation. The biologists say that due to intense urbanization and agriculture, bull sharks migrated from the east coast of the island to the west or from elsewhere in the world. Yet there is no link between shark attacks and urbanization. If there was, there would be thousands of attacks everywhere else in the world. So far, Reunion has 40% of the world's fatal attacks in 2017. But Reunion remains to be one of the least polluted French territories. Turbidity, due to heavy rains, should not be confused with pollution. The Surf Rider Foundation's local office tried an ambitious water quality analysis project, which was unaccessible because it did not have public subsidies. On the other hand, for us, the only significant and specific changes in Reunion are an end to the shark meat market in 1999 due to a suspicion of ciguatera, which ended shark fishing and led to their proliferation. The establishment of a marine reserve, which has led to the disinhibition of predators. Sharks are neither bad nor nice. They have just appropriated the seaside space, liberated from the human threat that once constituted traditional fishing. But it is no longer possible to dispute conservation policies without being labelled a heretic. According to the progressive narrative, human activity is to blame. Whether it be overfishing, pollution, global warming, human population growth, or just irresponsible behavior. Basically, all human activities are to blame, except the policies that protect dangerous predators.
And in the worst case, when all these predator excuses no longer work, they demand peaceful cohabitation, the acceptance of people being eaten as an unavoidable fatality, or the cessation of nautical activities. The same situation is found on all shark attack hotspots around the world. Even Australia and South Africa are gradually forced to stop security fishing measures under the pressure of NGOs, scientists, media, in a context significantly influenced by the vegan and animalist ideology. The initial schism that took place on Reunion Island is better understood now. The image of surfers as the leading environmental activists of the oceans was in danger. When the French authorities implemented a preventive fishing measure after a public outcry from local surfers, following Matthew Schiller's death in September 2011. An organisation with radical methods has hijacked the debate to discredit and isolate us in a growing international media context on shark attacks. The starting point was an article in September 2011 titled La Reunion Surfers are an embarrassment to the international surfing community and with a poster Surfer Asshole also in 2011. This organisation led a collective of NGOs and other associations in order to discredit us by multiplying legal proceedings against the authorities whenever the official fishing policy was put in place. Very fortunately, after several years of fierce battles, we've almost beaten them, at least to the point where they no longer have a representative on Reunion Island. Reunion has another specific problem. We are a young island constantly battered by waves and currents with almost no coral reef apart from a few small lagoons. The ocean has always been feared by Reunion Islanders. The population does not traditionally learn to swim. As a result, the aquatic activities introduced by the French are considered foreign and basically white. So the locals viewed shark attacks with contempt and the subsequent closure of the ocean is laughable by an unconcerned local opinion. A broad mitigation policy has been put in place in response to the fight led by the prevention associations. And one of the aspects is the use of smart drum lines, which can target dangerous sharks and keep bycatch alive. The last reunion fisheries study shows that regular and localised fishing efforts on bull and tiger sharks is effective. In addition to the targeted fishing programme, a total ban on the fishing of five reef shark species was introduced in February 2015. The aim was to restore an unbalanced ecosystem due to an excessive bull shark presence. In Reunion, about 350 very large tiger sharks and bull sharks have been killed since 2011. The dishonest hypocrites claim that fishing was useless as the attacks continued. But how many more deaths would there have been if this program had not happened? Five deaths? Ten deaths more? Securing by non-lethal barrier nets was attempted in 2016 but bull sharks attacked twice inside the nets and put an end to this project. From a global perspective, we are confronted by statistics manipulation. Conservationist propaganda convinces people that if sharks are in danger, it's a result of the bad image they receive from the media and from the film Jaws. This results in a multitude of ways to belittle the risk, even from the most powerful people. An example, Bill Gates, who makes silly comparisons with mosquitoes to ridicule shark attacks. A survey was conducted in 2014 by a large European communication group for the Ministry of Ecology. Comparisons with other unlikely causes of death were described as statistical manipulation. They also point out that the anti-massacre reactions are excessive, disconnected from local circumstances and species. The idea of culling sharks merely to preserve a leisure activity combined with the irresponsibility of surfers allows NGOs to maintain hysteria around the debate. Even the Florida Museum, responsible for the international shark attack file, ridicules the low risk of shark attacks, comparing them to other improbable risks. These tactics are commonly used by scientists and the media to make sharks seem cute while reinforcing the stigma against anyone who dares to call for preventative measures. The victim becomes the only culprit. The efforts of this scientific institution are not concerned with stopping the attacks, but in ridiculing the probability of their occurrence and making them seem acceptable. 
Another scientific approach proposed by Christopher Neff is to identify attacks as mere encounters. The stakes would be considerable, according to the most powerful NGO PEW, save the sharks, save the world. To save the planet, let us sacrifice a human, or better still, a subhuman, a parasite, a surfer. What if accepting the death of a few hundred sharks for mitigation could reduce the number of attacks, improve the image of sharks, and in return lead to protect millions more? Yet sharks are not fished around the world because of their bad image, but rather for their meat. 76 million sharks are fished each year for food, and less than 2,000 for mitigation. About the USA. The attacks are frequent, but often not fatal. The risk in Hawaii is acceptable and accepted given the large number of people in the water and the very low number of fatalities. Only six deaths since 1980. Hawaii does not employ a shark mitigation policy. There are only tiger sharks and no bull sharks in Hawaii. Florida is the epicenter of shark attacks around the world, with an average of 25 attacks per year, with very few fatal attacks. Most attacks are not serious, and they are content to just momentarily close the beaches with signpost-based prevention measures. There's a lot of swimmers, sharks, but also recreational fishermen. It is a paradox to note that the no coal movement comes from the USA, a country that kills a lot of sharks. The United States is one of the largest shark fishing countries, more so than China, who don't actually fish shark. The USA supported commercial fishing in the 1980s, to the point of publishing a dedicated manual in 1985. There is shark fin soup all over the United States serving a large Asian community. Despite regular fishing, research shows shark populations improving off US East Coast. According to this paper, hundreds of thousands of sharks can be fished on the East Coast. The 2018 quota is about 4,000 metric tons. American fisheries supply a strong demand for fins, selling the meat for 50 cents a pound. But the market is now threatened by the lobbying of shark lawyers. Scientists who have taken years to establish sustainable fisheries are worried about the end of this trade. If the United States can no longer supply the shark fin market legally, then uncontrolled poaching will take its place. Shark attacks are an extremely rare phenomenon in the United States, considering the estimated 3 million surfers and tens of millions of swimmers. So there is no need for a mitigation program. The statistics show that San Diego is the most affected area in California. Attacks are almost exclusively caused by great white sharks, which paradoxically pose a much lower threat than bull sharks in terms of numbers. In my opinion, this is because they mainly feed on marine mammals, which are rich in fats. Great whites typically turn away when they realize they have mistaken a human for a seal, but an investigative bite can obviously be catastrophic for a person. The last deadly attack in September 2018 revived the debate at Cape Cod, as scientists admit an increase in the population of great white sharks. But with very low risk of fatal attacks, there is little chance that this will result in a mitigation program. Fatal shark attacks remain an extremely rare phenomenon on the planet, but continue to receive growing media attention. Because this phenomenon fascinates public opinion in our modern societies where sharks and surfers have become new icons. In relation to the number of population and people in the water, Reunion Island exceeds all shark attack records, despite the ocean being closed since 2013. Surf image and shark attacks. A traditional practice in Polynesia, then bourgeois with Jack London, surfing has become a symbol of leisure, first with the Beach Boys, then a counterculture symbol with Apocalypse Now. It is the starting point of a persistent image that changes from that of marginal rogue living on the outskirts of society to being recovered by the hippie movement of the 70s, cool and eco-friendly, living on peace, love and waves at the expense of society in a perpetual search for pleasure. To ending up as a kook or daydreaming idiot, such as the character Brice from a recent French movie, Brice Denise.
These successive representations of the surfer are similar from place to place, regarded as marginal, irresponsible, in search of trouble and rule breakers. What if the shark played an ecological role in ridding the beaches of these parasites? This is the idea launched by Sharp, head of Charlie Hebbo in 2012, after two attacks close to Reunion, where he glorifies sharks, saying, chew the smug wankers to pieces before shitting them back out. The percentage of recreational surfers attacked gradually increased in the last century to exceed 50% in 2018. That's why the conflict between surfers and sharks is manipulated more and more by the media. Le Mans newspaper released a propaganda video in March 2019, Sharks Cold for Surfers Protection. The anti-surfer misinformation around the idea of irresponsible surfers was broadcast by the mainstream media with the support of show business and the elite. In fact, surfers are highly functional members of society. This cliché persists despite a more complex reality, as illustrated by the university's approach to surfing and this conference. Just like the data that shows the correspondence of the higher socio-professional categories in the surfing community. Surfing has become a significant tool of economic development all over the world, because in addition to being part of the ocean leisure lifestyle, it's probably the most sustainable ocean practice because it uses natural energy. To the fashion and advertising industries, the symbolic image of surfing represents a sophisticated activity that portrays demigods taming nature, living wild and free. The surfer is very close to nature and ecological values. At the same time, this practice also symbolizes free time, leisure and uselessness. Enjoying nature for recreation is no longer acceptable in the 21st century, especially in the face of sharks, the ocean's new totem. In recent years, the surfing community has been in turmoil. An attack on Mick Fanning in 2015, Kelly Slater's commenting in favour of shark fishing in Reunion in 2017, and the cancellation of WSL competition in Margaret River in 2018. With contradictory positions, whether politically correct or on the side of peaceful cohabitation, Rastovich, Tom Carroll, no one to defend humans, even Kelly Slater was forced to backpedal. With the myth of a peaceful solution through innovation, with the promise of individual or even collective electromagnetic devices, who's ready to trust their lives or the lives of their children on an electronic gadget? While waiting for a technological miracle, repeated experiments reinforce the fatalistic side of the natural problem that apparently has no solution. What future? Is it possible to imagine that the number of attacks would drop while the efforts to protect sharks increases? especially at the popular beaches in wealthy Western countries, where NGOs looking for donations and notoriety have the most influence and support. The ocean has been banned for six years, and there are still hundreds of ocean users who continue despite the ban. So far to date, April 28th, 24 shark attacks were recorded in 2019 worldwide, and only one was fatal. It was on Reunion Island. As the proverb says, out of sight, out of mind. But even though here in California you are far away, we have links. As shown in this recent photo of Macy, the daughter of the great Californian champion, Rob Machado. She also serves in reunion in unprotected areas, defying the risk and the ban. Eight years of struggling and fighting for those who died in reunion and elsewhere, and for those still in the ocean. Thank you for listening.